So today I'm playing Modern Warfare Warzone, and if you don't know what that is, it's pretty simple. Basically you're sent to the Slavic region of Verdansk as a missionary to spread the word of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ to the locals by any means necessary, and executing all those who do not accept Jesus into their lives. <laughs> We are back on another missionary run, hoping for a better deal of success this time round. And a lot of you might be thinking, oh look at this guy's drip, he's got a default skin, what does he know about missionary work in the war zone? To that I would have to say that I don't really focus on my drip too much, but rather on spreading the bible to indigenous peoples. But on god your mama's minge will be tripping when she's reading this new testament. I decide to land at the hospital, but after I land it looks like a couple locals have banded together to exile me from their lands in the form of a bounty. So I decide to rather than use my superior firepower to blast them off the face of this earth, I just decide to hop in a vehicle and bugger off. And as I'm just having a casual leisurely drive along the coast, a fellow road user comes flying over the hill, and as a concerned law abiding citizen, I decide to make a citizen's arrest. He hops out of the car and walks toward me. and it turns Turns out, he's also a fellow Christian comrade, and so I show him all my Christian aid tools, such as my bulletproof vest, my 12 gauge shotgun ammunition, my 5.56 caliber assault rifle ammunition, and my neat little rocket propelled grenade. But it was all a ruse. He had bamboozled me. He was not a true Christian. He's the type of guy who when washing his hands, puts soap on first before rinsing them with water. And he kills me. I'm such a fool. But don't let this distract you from the fact that this man is definitely getting his driver's license revoked. And when I regain consciousness, it seems that I'm the one who has been arrested. I mean it probably makes some sense given the many drug related felonies I have. But nonetheless I'm back in the most unethical prison in South Verdansk. While waiting for my chance to escape, this twat thinks he can scrap me. He must not have read the scouting report. I'm not saying I'm better than him. But theoretically, if I'm in the ring with Prime Mike Tyson, he's getting a left right good night, and I'm folding him up like a deck chair and putting him away till Christmas. Which also begs the question, who would win in a fight between myself and a kangaroo? Well let me break it down for you, kangaroos are well known boxers, so I'll keep my distance. And when it throws a punch, I simply duck under and shoot in, thus eliminating the boxing element. Once in the clinch, I'll perform an outside leg trip to take the big boy to the ground. I will then swiftly transition into a full mount, and utilize my excellent ground and pound technique. If Kangaroo Jack starts throwing some back, I'll simply go for the triangle choke and win via submission. So in other words, yeah. I think I might win. When I get back, I find a quad bike and decide to go for a ride. And much like driving a car, I stick to the speed limits and tracks, as I know how extremely dangerous quad bikes can be. Psych! Safety is for non-believers. I know my homie Jay Chisel got me. This is some extreme urban quad biking. And what's better than outdoor quad biking? That's right, indoor quad biking. And if this isn't a 2020 motorsporting highlight, I don't know what is. At this point, I'm not quite sure why Red Bull hasn't sponsored me yet. After smashing back 22 energy drinks and growing a mullet, I decide to head over to the amusement park because everyone knows this is the best way to pick up ladies nowadays. And would you look at that, there's no cues. Epic chungus moment. But when I get in and go look for a female to finesse with my refined lingual skills, there is no one to be found. Damn, this COVID-19 thing is a mega cock block. With all this isolation and social distancing nonsense, I haven't got any coochie in four years. Not an epic chungus moment. Off in the distance, I spot what seems to be a train, and this train is rumored to be delivering essential food supplies throughout the region. However, it's been run by those pesky Mormons, always trying to outdo me. And so I decide to go all Red Dead Redemption on its ass and hijack it. But it seems like they've got some sort of impenetrable shield preventing me from retaining the Lord's rightful possessions. But even worse than that, it seems KSI has received word about the year's worth of food supplies and intends to take the shipment for his light midday snack, as he claims he's just bulking but I'm not buying it. And he starts RPGing me, but I'm not trying to get in between KSI and his meal time. So I quickly run off and devise the most strategically sound military plan to ever exist. Genius, I know. After a while, I venture off and find yet another quad bike. And I know people may say that GTA 5 or Forza have the best driving mechanics, but guess again champ, I am the drift king. I will never be silenced. I will never be slowed and I will never be blown up by an explosive sniper round. Okay, so that last one might have been a little premature. While in the pre-game lobby, I snipe this fella out of the air, and he then starts to fall out of the sky in a rather odd manner, which I think is just pure comedy gold. Kind of like those people who when asked the question, what's up, reply with the sky. Like, oh my god, that's genuinely hilarious. Why do you not have an agent? 
Wait, you don't do stand-up? And you're telling me you don't have a Netflix special? And you're currently not on a world tour? And you don't have your own TV show? No, you're joking. You're not co-starring in a movie with Kevin Hart and The Rock? Damn, that's crazy. How does Hollywood not know about you? For my next stop, I decide to head over to the military base, where I shall assemble my army of Christian missionary workers. But I accidentally land well short and end up next to this odd looking sculpture. And I guess anything passes as art these days. This scene looks like a hedgehog's rectum, but how could I be surprised? Celebrities these days choose their baby names from Facebook posts. Your baby's name is the last thing you ate, and the colour of the last dog you said was a good boy. I find this tower over here rather intriguing, and suspect that there may be someone hiding at the top of it. So I head over and start the long climb to the top, and damn, this thing is really tall. It kind of reminds me of the time I got my little brother to overcome his fear of heights when we went bungee jumping. We had spent all day hiking up this valley, and we finally got to the spot and we decided that he should go first but he was being such a pussy crying and snorting away to the point where I said enough is enough and I pushed him off and as it turns out Apparently, bungee jumps are supposed to be done with ropes and harnesses. The more you know, right? I spot a local running about the camp, so I decide to make like Obi-Wan Kenobi and get these boys below me, so I can snipe from the high ground. And when he attempts to stimulate the Vidunsk economy via increased spending at a buy station, I take my opportunity to strike. And by take my opportunity, I mean give him a few warning shots first, obviously. Because by improving the economy means greater education, effectively ending my missionary tour. And we can't let that happen. But little did I know the gas had come in and for about the fifth time in one day I suffocate so back to the gulag once more and when my match begins I get an untimely rock to the jaw and I immediately implore the person who threw it to not do that again take notes kids even through adverse conditions the crowd against me and all the pressure in the world I triumph against all odds which makes me prouder than when my mate went to the toilet at school and he returns to my devilish grin and about 18 well-crafted carefully sculpted veiny throughout his books. After looting a house, I run over to this neat looking bunker and have a look around. And while searching the bunker for impure non-Christian children, I notice a local is heading towards me. So I make like an epic gamer and sprint to the corner and aim at the door. I quickly realize he's bulk buying supplies from the buy station. And oh no, I don't think so buddy. You're not stimulating the economy on my watch. Just watching his loot fly out makes me so happy. Perhaps even happier than the time my mate lost his virginity. I remember it so vividly. We we were at a party just having a good time and out of the corner of my eye I see him taking this girl up the stairs. Then we all ran up to the door and started cheering for him. He finally did it. I mean, it might have been slightly questionable doing it at my little sister's 8th birthday party, but like fair game. I continue to make like a good player and hide in the corner of a different bunker, but I end up getting extremely distracted by the laser sight on this mp5. I mean, I've always criticized cats, but never tried it. Maybe I should start looking- nah nah, I would never do that. Unless, hours later, well, I assume hours later, I have no idea. I keep looking at my watch and realizing I don't even have one. And why would I wear it that way around? If I'm going to wear my Sesame Street watch, I'll wear it loud and proud. I then start spray painting love hearts around the place to hopefully attract a gamer girl to be my girlfriend. Please love me. I'm a nice guy. I can make you cool crayon drawings. Please. Anyway, after a couple of hours of ferociously sweating from my eyes, I decide to leave, but I know there's a local around here and I need to convert him to Christianity. So I very carefully, very cautiously tiptoe around attempting to catch them by surprise and scare the Jesus into them. And I think I heard them. So I pop up over the stairs and shout, Hey you kiddo, heard of the Bible? And who would have thought he was packing heat? That went a lot better in my head, but all good. Me and St. Peter will have a right laugh about this one. I see some boyos zooming past in a vehicle, and so I follow them, and see if they are intrigued by the prospect of becoming pals. And it seems as though it has worked. We all jump out and greet each other. But, what happens next? Is it A. I immediately get thirsted. B. We exchange phone numbers and go our separate ways. C. Become best palos and go on to win the game together. Or D. Get aggressively and senselessly drilled by male porn star Jordi El Nino. Come back next time. Nah, I'm just kidding, it's obviously D. While looting the homes of atheists, I hear the phone ringing, and I'm hesitant to answer the phone, because who the hell still has a landline these days? And on top of that, no one in their right mind would call someone over texting them, 
but I give in and pick it up. And to no one's surprise, it's an angry Russian dude yelling at me and trying to sell me his ball shaving kit. Which kind of gets me thinking about how easily YouTubers and TikTokers these days sell out for a bit of coin, and it just really nicks me the wrong way. Which is why I use the Mantrim 3000 with brand new no neck technology. It will make your junk look like the naked mall rat from Kim Possible. And the ladies love it.